guys, welcome back to Melanie On Demand. In today's episode, we're going to focus on the best practices in choosing the right program for you as an international student here in Canada. We're going to look at the bigger picture on how this program will affect your peer application and we're going to zoom in to the details of the program that you should be looking at. Let's begin! again in our Canada Study Permit application video series where I share practical tips that you can use for your DIY application. This is part one, section four, choose your program wisely. Before I begin, I sincerely want to thank all of you guys for your ongoing support. Thank you very much for watching my videos and for subscribing as well. And if you're new here, welcome. I am Melanie and I make videos for all of you who wants to start their Canadian journey using the student to PR pathway? I was once like you before I got my permanent residency. I think that was uh, four years ago when I started my study permit application. And there are a lot of things to do. There's so many websites to read and a lot of documents to prepare. I was so confused and uh, overwhelmed and undecided by all the steps that are needed to be done. But I tell you, it's gonna get better. Just take it one step at a time and understand the process so that you will not get lost. That is why I created this video series, Canada Study Permit Application, so that you'll have an idea on how to approach this life-changing journey with a clearer perspective. This is not exactly how I did mine. I got a lot of problems and mistakes and roadblocks along the way, but those negative things they didn't stop me from pushing forward. I learned a lot of lessons from my experiences as a DIY applicant, which I want to share with you in this channel. So if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing and hit that bell button for notifications. Also, I want to do a quick survey just to get a feel of my viewer status. Can you please tell me in the comment section below which part of the student to pr pathway are you in right now? Are you currently in stage one, planning for SP and or OWP applications? Stage two, applying for SP and or OWP. Stage three, international student in Canada. Or stage four, graduate, PGWP holder or applying for PR. Please take time to tell me in the comment section below because it will help me prioritize which videos I will do next. program of study in Canada is a crucial step to your success in the student to PR pathway. There are lots of factors affecting this decision, but we're going to discuss only the big ones. Now, I want to clarify that in this video, we're not going to choose any program or school or city or provinces for that matter, but this will be a general guide for anyone who is in the process of choosing their program regardless of where they want to study in Canada. But of course, my examples will be based on my own experiences. So that's here in Alberta, particularly at SAIT. As you can see here, I'm wearing a SAIT shirt. I'm not sponsored by SAIT, but I am a proud graduate of that school. I got this shirt from volunteering activities while I was still there. I started in September 2017 and I finished my program in April 2019. I took a two-year diploma program in chemical laboratory technology. Okay guys, we are now at this stage. You know your why or your reason why you want to come to Canada. Second, you've already calculated your CRS score. And third, by using the CRS calculator, you are already convinced that student to PR pathway is your best bet for Canada immigration. Now, it's time to choose your program of study. For some people, choosing their program is very easy. They are already decided and they just go for it. But most of us, it can be very vague or confusing. I want you to look at it this way. Let's try to reverse engineer the process. 
What's the main goal of your study in Canada? Get your PR status. How do you get your PR status? Get Canadian skilled work experience. And how do you get that skilled work experience in Canada? Choose a program that will land you that skilled job. So in this thought process, choosing your program is a crucial factor to get to your PR goal. It is the starting point of your journey in Canada, so it makes a whole lot of sense to spend time analyzing and researching the best program for you. That's why I specifically made this video to help you think intelligently about choosing your program of study in Canada. Don't be a victim of these common practices in choosing your program. First is the trend. Just because you saw a lot of people getting study permit approval when taking that specific program, it doesn't mean it will apply to you as well. And then you'll go ahead with a program without evaluating your situation first. This is a big no-no. Each situation is unique, so you should do your due diligence before jumping into a decision. Second, blind recommendations. This is similar to trend but with more credibility. This can come from a friend who was successful in this journey or maybe from someone you ask help from. Remember, they don't know your whole story, your background, your skills, and your ultimate goals in life. Only you know. However, there's something good that you can take from this situation. You can cherry pick the good points from their advice, then apply and modify it to fit your journey. Third, self-serving agencies. Before I get into this, I want to tell you that not all agencies are bad. There are good ones out there, but you have to be very careful in choosing which one. There are agencies affiliated to schools in Canada, well most of them are. That means they earn a certain percentage if they manage to get a student enrolled to that school's program. So when you approach the agency for a study permit, they will only recommend those that are within their affiliations they will try to persuade you to choose from that small list. This could be useful for some of you, but know that you are not just limited to what they are recommending. There's a whole bunch of programs out there available for you as an international student. You just have to do your research properly. That's exactly what I will discuss today, how to choose your program wisely. I've listed a few pointers that will help you decide whether that program is good for you or not. What I'm gonna discuss today is just based on my personal judgment and experiences. It's not based on any CIC website or immigration law or official checklist for that matter. So please make sure that you consider carefully if these pointers are applicable to your case or not. At the end of the day, the best judge for your situation is still you because you know all the details about your application. Skill job after graduation. This is very important, especially if you are the main applicant in your EE application. You don't want to spend thousands of dollars studying then in the end, the job for that program will not qualify you for express entry because it is not considered a skilled job in Canada. Or worst, you can't find a job because there's no vacancy for that particular line of work. So the way I look at it, first, you have to decide what skilled job do you want to do in Canada. By deciding what skilled job you want to pursue, it will narrow down your study program options. Choosing your targeted skill job can be based on your work experience, current or previous, based on your background education outside Canada, or maybe based on your dream career, that particular job that you really want to do all your life. For me, the best option will be the first one because there's a possibility that you can use your work history as a leverage later for your PR application. Plus, you already have that existing work experience to include in your resume when you apply for that job after studying. That's one step ahead from all of the graduates without work experience in that field. This was proven to be true in my case. I have a solid work history in chemical laboratories, so I chose to be a chemist or a chemical lab tech. Both of these are considered skilled jobs here in Canada. How do you know which job is considered skilled or not? Go to this page, 
find your NOC. Scroll down to the bottom part, do a keyword search, and here in the skill level or type, it should say NOC 0 A or B. In this case, chemist is NOC A and chemical technologist is NOC B. Both of them are considered skilled. When listing down your targeted skill job, you can shortlist as many as you want and then decide later on. Now the question is, while outside Canada, how do you assess these jobs? You can try to search for job vacancies from websites like Indeed, Workopolis, or LinkedIn, and these websites will roughly tell you if the job is in demand or not. It will also give you an approximate salary range and probably the job description. But my favorite website for this purpose is Job Bank Canada. All the postings there are 100% legit and there are some cool features that I particularly like. Let me show you what I mean. Go to Job Bank Canada homepage and then click the arrow next to Trend Analysis. Then choose Explore the Market by Occupation. Type in your desired occupation, let's say chemical lab, then the options will come out. Choose the right knock code, then search. You'll see a summary page, then a detailed description of job duties, which will give you an idea of the nature of the work that you might be doing if you ended up as a chemical lab tech here in Canada, and some examples of job titles. You can also see a comparison of wages across the provinces and territories. You can also view this skill job opportunities for the next three years. Also available jobs are listed by province as well. Here you can roughly assess whether that skill job is in demand here in Canada or not. Probably you can consider studying in that high ranking province because your employability after graduation is better in that particular province. Next, this will give you an idea of what program of study you'll need to take if you want to work as a chemical lab tech here in Canada. This means you can either study diploma in chemical lab tech, chemical engineering technology, or biochemical programs. This page also lists down the professional certification and licensing bodies for this skilled job. Let's try another one. For example, you want to be an IT analyst. So follow the same steps. And here you can see that you need to have either a bachelor's degree in computer science or a completion of a college program in computer science. It also mentioned that experience as a computer programmer is usually required as well as certifications or trainings. There are plenty of valuable information here in Job Bank Canada. I strongly suggest that you visit this page for your skilled job assessment. Another useful way is to ask those who are already working in that profession in Canada for their personal experiences. Remember to ask the reliable ones so you will not be misguided. Gather all the facts, then try your best to make a sound decision based on your situation. Second, program information. Now that you have an idea of which program to take, let's break down the information you need to check about that particular program. Designated Learning Institution or DLI. Make sure that the program being offered is PGWP eligible and that the school offering it is included in the DLI list. It is easy to check this information. Just go to this website, Designated Learning Institutions List, and choose the province. Here you'll see the name of the institution or school, the DLI number, and on the right side, offers PGWP eligible programs. Your school should be here in the list and it should say yes for PGWP eligible programs. To further check if your program of interest is eligible for PGWP, go to the institution's homepage or the school's homepage and search there. Or if you can't find it in their website, you can email the school's international center. But make sure before you proceed to that specific program, you got the yes for that PGWP eligible program. Next, programs eligibility. 
Each program has its own academic requirements that you have to fulfill in order to secure a seat. DLIs have unique ways of assessing your background education. Some will require original copies of your documents to be mailed to them, while some of them scan copies are enough. So make sure that you know what applies to your program. The most popular question I get is whether or not it's okay to study diploma even if you have a degree already. In my opinion and my experience, it is okay as long as you can justify it in your study plan or what they usually call SOP or Statement of Purpose. You have to make sense of why you are studying this program. Explain in detail how the program will help you in your career progression. Well, in my case, I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry, then I studied chemical laboratory technology diploma. I got that bachelor's degree 10 years ago and I haven't been back to school ever since. The closest I got is to go to seminars, usually very specific to the line of work that I was doing. Although I was working in a chemical laboratory environment, I needed a refresher for the basics and update for handling new instruments in chemical analysis. Usually in my line of work, if a chemist is focused in a specific industry, let's say food testing, you can be an expert in that particular area, but outside your niche, you're not as sharp as before. That's my story. Also, I want to focus on chemistry lab instrumentation and the CLT curriculum is heavily loaded with that. The program also has subjects that I didn't study before. So this diploma program is a value added credential to my career progression. Be clear and detailed with your explanation in your study plan. If possible, include evidences such as comparison tables of courses pros and cons of the program, etc. So the visa officer will understand your point of view. Also, do not copy the explanation of others, please. Each situation is unique. I suggest that you try to get an idea from other people's experience and apply that to your situation, but do not copy to avoid plagiarism. Creating an effective study plan is included in this video series, so make sure you are subscribed to this channel if you need help in that topic. Cost. Undoubtedly, this is a very important aspect. Whatever program you choose, you have to make sure you can afford it. I dedicated a separate part for Money Matters here in this video series because there's a whole bunch of topics that we need to discuss there program availability in canada there are different semesters or intakes depending on the institution majority of the programs in canada start in fall semester for some winter and spring intakes are also available check your program of interest start date so you can plan accordingly this will give you an idea when you should start the processing of your application program length one or two years. Remember, one year program will earn you one year of PGWP and two year program will give you three years of PGWP. The length of your program of study should depend on your chances of getting a PR status after studying. You should plan this carefully because the last thing that you want to worry about is getting out of status because your PGWP expired without getting an invitation to apply for PR. For most mature international students that I know, with a CRS score in the high 300s, one year of PGWP is not enough because it will only earn them one year of Canadian work experience that is provided they get a job as soon as they graduate. They earn that one year and then they qualify for the CEC program of express entry. But it doesn't mean that they'll automatically get an invitation to apply. It will still depend on their CRS score and the EE draw cutoff during that time. So there's a chance that the one year PGWP status will expire while waiting for ITA if they took that one year program. However, if you studied for two years, you will get three years of PGWP, so you will have sufficient time to process your PR application without getting out of status. But I'm not saying that it's impossible. In my case, 
I took a two-year program and my PGWP was valid for three years. But I barely used my PGWP at all because right after my program, I received a notification of interest from Alberta's PNP or AINP. Then after two months, I was nominated by the province. I submitted our peer application, then it was approved in about seven months of processing. So that's nearly one year after my program finished. Technically, I could have just taken a one-year program if I knew that I will be invited by the province immediately. However, there's no way I can predict that because in-demand occupations in Alberta changes every now and then. So there's a possibility that this will not be my case. What am I trying to say is I don't want to risk being out of status, especially if I know my CRS score is way lower than the cutoff. On the other hand, there are a number of students who successfully got their PR by studying a one-year program. Those that I know have borderline CRS scores who only needs about 20 to 30 points to get an ITA. So it is important to know your CRS score before you start studying so you can plan wisely. For more information about this topic, please watch these videos where I discuss about the CRS score and planning using CRS calculator. Next, employability of graduates. This is something that's good to know. Most schools here in Canada conduct surveys to determine the employment rate, salaries, and satisfaction of their newest alumni. Personally, I can attest to this because I have completed that survey myself. For example, using the SAIT website, let's look at the program that I took. So I'll choose McPhail School of Energy. Here, all the programs in that department is listed. For Chemical Laboratory Technology, 17 graduates responded and all of them are currently working. So that's 100% employment rate. That's awesome. You can view other departments as well and compare the employment rate. Even the median salary for the graduates of that program can be found here. The third topic I want to talk about is the school's location and the living conditions in that area. As a newcomer in Canada, you should take note that the school's location and the living conditions around that area is very important. You're lucky if you have relatives who can guide you on your first few weeks in Canada as you are familiarizing with the place. But if you're a total stranger, you have to do a lot of research even before deciding to come in. And quite frankly, you have no escape with the cold weather because almost all locations in Canada have winter seasons. But some provinces are worse than the others. For example, you decide to come to Alberta, which is, by the way, considered cold as well. You can either choose Calgary or Edmonton. These two cities in Alberta have quite similar logistics both of them have DLIs, state in Calgary, Nate in Edmonton. Both cities have reliable public transit system like buses and trains that can help you move around even without your own vehicle. Also, there's a good number of rental places nearby schools so you can quickly search for accommodation. And because these are cities, Groceries and shopping malls are easily accessible so you won't have a hard time securing your basic needs, especially during winter times. Plus, in cities like Calgary and Edmonton, there are plenty of part-time jobs for international students. So there's a chance that you can work for 20 hours per week and generate income for your daily needs. Next, eligibility for PNP or Provincial Nominee Programs. This is towards the end of your journey in student to pr pathway, but it's good to know as well at this starting point so you can use it to your advantage. As I discussed earlier, getting a provincial nomination is one way of increasing your CRS score. So when choosing a skilled job and your program, make sure that you check the provincial nominee streams available in that province. Here in Alberta, it is called AINP or Alberta Immigrant Nominee Program. There are two streams available for international students, which are the Alberta Opportunities Stream or AOS and Alberta Express Entry Stream or EE Stream. 
For my case, I was nominated under Alberta EE Stream. These two programs have different requirements and eligibility as seen in this page, but both of them are applicable for international students. And lastly, employability of spouse. In cases where the spouse of the international student, the OWP holder, will be the main applicant for the Express Entry application, it is wise to prioritize the employability of the working spouse first. Then, only consider choosing the international student's program of study. So decide on which province you want to go and pick the city that will be based on the OWP employability and then start searching the DLI and the PGWP eligible programs in that area for the international student. If you are coming to Canada with a spouse, this is your best chance of getting a PR status. How does that work? Let me explain. First, calculate each of your CRS scores. Treat it as if each one of you is the main applicant for PR. After your calculations, if one of you scored higher, let's say one is 430 and the other one is 390, the spouse who scored higher should be the working spouse or the OWP holder, while the one with the lower score should be the student. Why? Because that means that the OWP holder only needs roughly 50 points to reach the cutoff of about 470 to 480 to get an IDA. Of course, it still depends on the CRS cutoff during that time. Where will the working spouse get that extra point? This will come from one year of skilled Canadian work experience that can be obtained because open work permit allows the spouse to work in Canada. After getting that one year of skilled work in Canada, CRS score will increase plus the working spouse will be qualified to CEC stream in express entry, hence higher chances of getting an ITA. However, the caveat is, the OWP holder needs to be working in a skilled job in Canada, so that's not 0A or B, in order for this strategy to work out. By studying in Canada, the working spouse will be able to work and get that Canadian work experience. Remember the question about the program length, one year or two years? In this scenario, one year program might work for your favor. One year program will give you one year PGWP, so that's enough time to process your PR application. But remember to plan properly. If this plan works out, both of you can be permanent residents in about one and a half years, provided that all of your PR documents are ready. And if the student took a two year program here in Canada, the last semester's tuition could be down to the local rate, which is about one-third of the international student tuition. That's a big saving. So just to summarize our discussion for today, when choosing your program, make sure to take note of which skill job you want to pursue here in Canada and shortlist the programs that will land you that skill job. To help you decide which program is appropriate for you, look closely on each program's information. The eligibility, the availability, program length, of course the cost, and the employability of the graduates. Also, check the accessibility of the DLI location and the living conditions surrounding that school. Then, do your research about the eligible PNP streams applicable to that program or skilled job. And finally, if the OWP holder is the main applicant in your express entry application, consider their employability first before deciding the international student's program. If you learned from this video, please give it a like and don't forget to tell me in the comment section below which stage are you in right now in the student to PR pathway. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching till the end. This is Melanie On Demand. See you next time. Bye!